In this video, I want to talk about notes and highlighting. And I have to say, this is something I love to do. Write in my Bible in the margins, mark it up with all kinds of colors. For me, that's not me messing up my Bible. That's me getting to know my Bible. But I have to say, it hasn't always been my philosophy. There was a day when I thought, I don't want to mess up this pristine page. What if I make a highlight or a note today that, I don't know, 10 years I'm super embarrassed about? There, I've ruined a Bible forever. <laughs> Gotta get a new one, right? Well, I think we can put aside those fears when it comes to a digital platform like Verbum because, hey, these are notes that I can turn off and on, that I can delete and edit. And so what's the fear? What's the trouble? It's just a matter of getting to know how to use these sophisticated tools. So let's do it. Let's jump to tools over here. And notice that I have highlighting and notes. And that's what I've already opened here on the left side of my screen. See how I have highlighting here? And then just behind that, I have my Bible notes that are open here. On the right side of the screen, I have four Bibles open. And they're each in link set A. We're here in Luke 24 and verse 13. Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And perhaps the first thing to notice is just that the page is quite colorful, isn't it? Right? We have notes on verse 13 and 14 and 15. In fact, almost every single verse has a sticky note. Now, you can't hardly imagine doing something like this in a physical Bible. There's not room enough in the margin. <laughs> but, of course, now I can write as much or as little as I like. And I love that when I do write, and, for example, I reference, say, a Bible verse, Look how this becomes a live link. That is like creating my own cross-references. I think that's so cool. But more on that in a moment. First, let's just notice these other uh, highlighting. In fact, see, in addition to the notes, we have these colors in blue and red and green. What's this all about? Well, for me, blue marks a chronological cue, whereas red, these are the figures, the characters, the people in the passage. And then green, like Emmaus, and then Jerusalem, these are places that I just want to call my attention to. Okay, so that's how I do my highlighting palette. You can change it. In fact, that's the whole point. Um, if you're constantly using the blue highlighter, why don't you come here to that highlighter pen, choose this arrow, and jump down to shortcut key, and you can set B as the shortcut key for the blue highlighter, or maybe G for green, or R for red, etc. Look, let's do this. Let's make a new shortcut key for the brown highlighter. Let's say I'm going to use that one all the time. I come to shortcut key. I'll set 1 as the code there. And now when I highlight a text, and then I simply hit on my keyboard 1, look at that. I've now highlighted with a brown highlighter. And what happens if that was the wrong color? Don't worry, this is something we can delete. It's something we can change. I'll show you how. Just right-click on your new highlight. Make sure the selection is here on the left side of the menu. And then just drop down to where it says either open notes or delete notes. We could delete it, but in this case, let's go ahead and change it. So I'll do open notes. And sure enough, there it is, my new note. Here's the highlighting style. And if I don't like the brown color, I want to change it to something else. Look, let's just make it, I don't know, orange. And there it is. My new, my new highlight just became orange. Now, do you think these highlights that I've made here in my ESV, are they going to be visible in my other Bibles, like the NAB? Let's jump over to the NAB and try. If you notice, my annotations are here, but where are my highlights? They're not here. I made them in the ESV, right? But watch, I can make them visible here by applying what's called a visual filter. I'll click this menu here, and I'm going to drop down to what, where it says corresponding notes and highlights. And I'm just going to turn those on. And look at that. The notes that I applied in the ESV are now shining through and made manifest here in my NAB. Isn't that fantastic? Look, this even works in the Greek New Testament. In fact, any resource that is a interlinear Bible. If it's not an interlinear Bible, like the Vulgate, those won't appear. Now, it, 
let's go back to these notes because I want to show you how it's not just colors you can apply. Of course, you can add lots, lots of words. I want to do that with you now. Simply, perhaps the easiest way to do this is by simply um, selecting a, a word or words and then see with my left menu, uh, my left mouse, and then this menu pops up and you see how the first option here on the left is to add a note. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click here and now notes open. The first thing I want to, you to notice is where it is anchored, right? Where is that sticky note stuck? It says here that we're in the ESV CE and the anchor is to the very words going to a village. Okay, so let's no and notice how that note is here. Look, I'll change its appearance just so you can make it more clear. Instead of a yellow square, let's turn it into a brown cross and see how my brown cross is here. And now watch this. I'll just type a, a few words like my new note. And then look at this. Look what happens when you hover over that new annotation. See how you can see a preview of the words inside? Just as you can with all of these other notes that already exist. But it's anchored to the words going to a village inside the ESV. If I jump to the Vulgate, look, I can't, I can't find my, my new note because it's not anchored to the verse 2413. Well, let's do that. Let's anchor it elsewhere. Come here to where it says add an anchor. And this time, let's go ahead and type in um, Luke 24, 13. And you can hit enter or click from the drop down and then hit done. And now look, see how the cross appears at the beginning of the verse in addition to the anchor to the very words. And so now that I see that this annotation is superfluous, we can get rid of it. Just come to the X and delete that particular anchor. And now all that remains is here. And this is visible in my other Bibles whether in English or Greek or Latin. It's even visible, look at this, in my commentary on Luke. See how there's a biblical reference, a reference to 2413? Well, there's the note that I anchored to that biblical reference. So now that we know that it's particularly powerful to anchor to the biblical reference and not just individual words, let's, let's apply some of these principles. Watch this. I'm going to open a note and see how I've anchored to Luke 24, 13, 14, 15, etc. Imagine you want to gather up all of that text, everything you wrote for this particular passage. Maybe you're teaching a class, maybe you're going to a Bible study, and you just want to have on hand a printout of all those things. Watch how I can easily select all of these passages, right? All of these annotations within my passage from Luke 24, 13 all the way to verse 33. And I'm just going to um, shift, con I'll, I'll just select one and then shift to, to select all the way down to um, 2433. And now I can, I can export this by hitting the panel menu, uh, print export. You can also hit control P. And now watch what happens. See how all the text, I have some nine pages of notes um, and it's something I can send to my printer copy to my clipboard or send to a new Word document. I think that's a wonderful way to, to gather together things that you have, material that you've collected over several notes. Now, these were easy to catch because they were all right in a row. There's another way to do it too. Jump back to an individual note, like this note in 2413. And let's go ahead and add an anchor. Let's say I'm interested in the fact that this is an appearance passage. So I'm going to add a tag, appearance passage. In fact, you see that I've already made this one, this in, in the past. Appearance passage now appears as a, a tag. If I want to see all those other passages, all those other notes that have this same tag so I can group them together, well, I can filter all of my notes by coming to this side panel where filters is visible, drop down to where it says tags. See how I have this section here called tags and you can uh, open up, I'll open up appearance passage and there I have seven notes or whatever it is, six notes, seven notes that, um, that I can easily grab. One's in Matthew, one's in Luke, John, etc. I can grab them all, export that if I like. 
tagging is one way to classify your notes. Now, sometimes, in addition to classifying by tags, you might want to do it a different way. You might want to create what's called a notebook, a separate notebook just for certain types of tags. Watch how this can be useful. Let's navigate back to Luke 24, 13. And there you'll notice this blue star. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And you'll notice that I'm in, inside of what's called a, new, a notebook. This particular notebook is called Synoptic Stars. Inside of this notebook, there are exactly seven notes. I only wrote seven little notes. There's a red one, <laughs> there's a yellow one, and there's a blue one, like here in Luke. But look how many times that one sticky note, this blue star, is anchored again and again and again. I've stuck a blue star wherever there's a passage that appears only in Luke. A red star means that the passage that follows is unique to Matthew. A yellow star tells me that the passage that follows is unique to Mark. And of course, orange and purple and green, these are combinations of those primary colors, tells me what's double tradition. And then the black star, what is triple tradition. Now I know not everybody is interested as I am in the synoptic questions, um, but gather the principle here. What's really great about making a notebook is that this is something that I can turn off and on whenever I want. Watch, see how the, the blue star appears? I'll come to visual filters, and now I'm gonna drop down to my notes and highlights, and instead of turning all of them off, like I can do here, I'm gonna keep them all on, but I'm gonna turn off just synoptic stars. Now I can hide them. If I want to, um, if I want to share this, these stars with others, let's say I want to give this to my students or to my colleagues or to those in my Bible study, the notes that you've created, you can easily share a notebook right here in Verbum. So let me show you how to do that. All of your documents, everything that you create in Verbum is right here in this, on your toolbar, Documents. And you'll see that under the tab Yours, you have those documents that you've created. You can also fish from the public so many others. So for example, if Synoptic Stars is shared online, well, we can search for it and we can see that, oh, Father Andrew Dalton has shared his Synoptic Stars. You can simply right click here to add to your documents or add to your documents here. And then once you grab that, it's gonna appear right here in yours, Synoptic Stars. And now when you navigate to any verse that has a star, you'll be able to see it or hide it or, you know, edit it yourself. And, and so that is something you're going to want to learn to do. Look, there's so much, there's so much complexity, potential complexity about these notes and highlights. Um, what you want to do is just begin. Even if you make a mistake, don't worry. Everything is something you can modify and change and alter later on. But the important thing is to get busy, get familiar with the tools so that you can make them work for you. Have fun.